Attack of the 50-Foot Woman is a 1958 film that tells the story of Nancy Archer, a wealthy woman who encounters a giant alien and, after a series of events, grows to an enormous size. This leads to a dramatic turn of events as she seeks revenge on her unfaithful husband and his mistress. The movie is known for its unique plot and has become a classic in the science fiction genre. As we dive into the world of this towering tale, expect to discover many funny, shocking, and sad facts that will keep you glued to the screen. While I don't have personal experiences or memories, I'm curious about yours. What's your most memorable moment related to this movie? Did it inspire you or impact your life in any way? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Your experiences add to the rich history of this unforgettable film. So, let's share and connect through the giant-sized adventures of Nancy Archer. The movie Attack of the 50-Foot Woman premiered in 1958. It tells the story of Nancy Archer, a wealthy woman who encounters an alien and grows to an enormous height of 50 feet. Set in a small California town, the plot revolves around Nancy's struggle with her new size and the chaos that ensues. Key characters include her unfaithful husband, Harry, and her doctor, Dr. Cushing. The film is known for its unique take on science fiction and has become a cult classic. It did not win major awards, but remains significant for its special effects and its commentary on gender roles in the 1950s. In a dramatic turn of events, the colossal woman finally reveals herself, towering over the landscape an hour into the film. Contrasting this grand entrance, the promotional poster exaggerates her size even further, depicting her holding a vehicle, suggesting a height well beyond her actual stature in the film. Years later, the film caught the attention of director Jim Wynorski, who toyed with the idea of a remake starring Sybil Danning, a notable shift that would have brought a new dimension to the original narrative. In a surprising move, the director chose to be credited under a pseudonym due to his dissatisfaction with the film's budget and quality. In a twist of fate, a vintage car used in the film was destroyed, not knowing its future value would far exceed that of the intended vehicle. Additionally, the lead actress drew inspiration for her performance from a classic dance sequence in cinema history, showcasing the influence of past film icons on contemporary works. In the creative process of this film, the working title was The Astounding Giant Woman. Alison Hayes, who played the lead role, was not just an actress, but also a beauty pageant contestant, having competed as Miss Washington, D.C. in the 1949 Miss America pageant. Contrary to the dramatic imagery presented on the promotional poster, where the colossal woman is seen wreaking havoc on vehicles and infrastructure, such scenes are absent from the actual movie. The film does not depict any highways or similar destruction. This discrepancy between marketing and movie content highlights the allure of sensational visuals in attracting an audience, despite not being representative of the film's actual storyline. In a scene where otherworldly forces disrupt the mundane, an alien being lifts a police vehicle, momentarily revealing the mechanics behind the illusion as both the car and its captor appear translucent. This fleeting transparency gives way to solidity after a brief shift in perspective. The era's strict censorship is subtly acknowledged through the characters Harry and Honey, who are confined to public displays of affection within the walls of Tony's bar, hinting at the limitations imposed on their relationship. Meanwhile, the film's visual allure extends beyond the screen, with its promotional artwork securing a place among the top 10 movie posters as celebrated by a leading entertainment magazine. This recognition underscores the lasting visual impact the film has had on popular culture. In the creation of this classic film, Yvette Vickers revealed that her memorable dance was not her own idea, but was suggested by Frank Chase, known for his role as Deputy Charlie. Adding to the dual roles, Michael Ross not only portrayed the towering extraterrestrial, but also took a turn as the bartender, showcasing his versatility on screen. The film itself was a strategic move to capitalize on the wave of interest generated by other giant-themed movies of that era, specifically The Amazing Colossal Man and The Incredible Shrinking Man, which had captured the audience's fascination just a year prior. In a remarkable feat of efficiency, the production of this film was completed in just eight days, coming in 10000 under the modest budget of 89000 Adjusted for inflation, this amount would be close to 820000 today. 
The lead actress Allison Hayes was known for her beauty pageant title as Miss Dixie of 1951 before starring in this film. Despite its reputation as one of the least successful science fiction movies, it has gained a following for its entertainment value, often celebrated in the category of films that are so poorly made, they're good. In a notable instance of sound recycling, the piercing screams of the character Nancy were later featured in the promotional material for another film the following year. The actress Yvette Vickers gained significant recognition from her role, which led to her appearance in Playboy magazine, captured by photographer Russ Myers. This film also stands out as a key work in the career of cinematographer Jacques R. Marquette, marking it as his most recognized project and a celebrated example of budget-conscious science fiction from that era. Allison Hayes' journey in Hollywood began with a chance encounter that could have led to a role in the Ten Commandments, but her existing contract with Universal International resulted in a missed opportunity. The film features a 1958 Chrysler Imperial convertible, showcasing the era's automotive design. Despite its technical shortcomings, the director's ability to craft a film with limited resources stands out, with well-executed shot composition and lighting distinguishing it from other low-budget science fiction movies of its time. In a unique crossover of audio effects, the beeping signal emitted by the alien spacecraft in this film was originally created for The Amazing Colossal Man. Meanwhile, the promotional artwork that heralded the film's release was crafted by none other than Roger Corman, whose design now resides in the Museum of Modern Art as a piece of cinematic history. Additionally, a subtle nod to the filmmaking process itself is captured on screen. A delivery man is spotted with a box marked by the unmistakable Kodak label, indicating a shipment of raw film stock, a crucial component in the movie making industry. In the creative process of casting for a notable science fiction film, Roger Corman initially considered Allison Hayes for the lead role, as revealed in his introduction to a DVD. However, he ultimately chose Betsy Jones Moreland after her performance in a Hollywood play caught his attention. Tragically, the film's main actresses both experienced untimely deaths. Hayes passed away at 46 from lead poisoning linked to calcium supplements, and years later, Yvette Vickers was found deceased in her home, her body undisturbed for an extended period. On screen, the film depicted the character Nancy's towering presence with a repeated sequence of steps against changing backdrops, a technique that reversed as she captured Harry. The inconsistency continued as Harry only appeared in her grasp when she approached the power lines, marking a shift in the visual narrative. In a classic scene, patrons at Tony's Bar and Grill are seen enjoying the Carolina Shag, a dance that adds a lively touch to the film's atmosphere. Years after its release, the film gained attention again under unfortunate circumstances, as it was frequently mentioned in reports about the death of actress Yvette Vickers, highlighting the lasting association with her career. Interestingly, the film's creation coincided with the aftermath of the Sputnik satellite launch, influencing the depiction of the alien spacecraft in the movie, which was referred to as a satellite due to a misconception of the term by the writer, reflecting the space race era's impact on popular culture. Alison Hayes left a lasting impression with her portrayal of Nancy Archer, the central character whose extraordinary transformation drives the narrative of the film. Her performance stood out in a genre that was gaining popularity during that era. Following the success of the film, there was talk of a sequel with a larger budget to be presented in Cinemascope and Color, which was a significant upgrade from the original production standards. A script was completed, anticipating a continuation of the story that had captured the audience's attention. However, despite these plans, and the potential for further exploration of the themes and characters introduced, the sequel was ultimately shelved and never realized. The reasons behind this decision remain a topic of discussion among fans and cinema historians alike. In the midst of Hollywood's golden era, a film was released that, despite its science fiction flair, reflected deeper societal anxieties. Behind the scenes of this feature, a poignant reality played out the lead actress Allison Hayes faced a personal health crisis. Unbeknownst to many, she suffered from severe health issues caused by calcium deficiency. Her condition, exacerbated by the physical demands of her role, led to a tragic decline in her well-being, casting a shadow over the film's production and her career. 
The stark contrast between her on-screen persona and off-screen struggles highlights the often unseen human element of filmmaking. 